What's up guys, welcome back to French Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Tesla stock, ticker symbol TS. LA on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Monday, April 8th. Okay guys, Tesla stock here on Friday, heading into the weekend down $6.21 a share, that's minus 3.63%. Now listen, of course, a lot of this movement here today is coming from a Reuters report uh, that Tesla is scrapping the sub 30k EV. Elon went, uh, you know, he took to Twitter and said that Reuters is, quote, lying again. But all this commotion certainly contributing to the volatility here today. Let's take a look and try to understand Tesla stock as best as we can heading into this coming week, Monday. We're going to pull out all the bias that the market is offering us, starting with a quick analysis of the volume profile, especially of that move, here on the five-minute chart. Listen, guys, the brand new upload schedule is live. Um, the Tesla videos will be daily uploads every day that the market is open from here on out. Every day, the Tesla video will hit at 5 p.m. Eastern time sharp. So if you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel and uh, those videos will be in your inbox 5 p.m. sharp every weekday. Let's take a look here. The primary move and really the only move that I'm interested in, in the, for the volume profile on Tesla here today is going to be that that drop and pop and kind of fade and then I suppose recovery that we got after the fact. We'll, we'll take a peek at all of it. Let's take a look here. Now, this kind of movement, we have to look at the volume profile a little bit different, okay? Because you see this. And if you ignore the green candle behind it, you're seeing, all right, like five consecutive out of context red bars broken up by one smaller, slightly smaller green bar. But we know that volatility is going to, like this, is going to be news driven. Okay. And the market can only act on what's available at the time. So, you know, then you have Elon, who literally posted his Reuters is lying again tweet. At 10.35 a.m. Central Time, that's when you get the recovery. Okay, so the market's acting on the information available. So I can't provide, I can't sit here and label, oh yeah, there's an obvious bearish bias here, because we have new information since that volume came in. So that would be irresponsible analysis on my part to do that, so I'm not going to do that. To me, there's bias on the news available, and the news has changed since this drop. Okay, Tesla just wasn't able to recover today. So let's move on here and let's take a look at the self-fulfilling prophecy psychological levels here on the 30-minute chart with the any indicators that have the most eyeballs. You'll notice that mine, my charts are very clean because all I want are the most popular. They have the most eyeballs, self-fulfilling prophecy mentality. 50 period, 200 period, that's all. You'll notice today that Tesla actually gave up the 50 period to the downside, whereas Thursday we headed into the close kind of uh, in, in a channel being formed by these two. Well, we gave up that channel to the downside here today, actually in pre-market. Now, we got close to a retest, never really made a true retest, and then faded off of the news. So today is a less technical, less psychological day. Today, especially on the 30 minute here, is driven more by news. That news release you know, kind of shot any possibility of getting a true retest of the 50 period, which, you know, dramatically altered the outcome of the day. Now, Tesla stock currently stands about 3% away from the lower moving average, which is the 50 period. So listen, bulls, you know, today was a 3.6% downside move day. We've seen crazier things than 3% out of Tesla. But just understand that if you're a bull, the best case scenario specific to the 30 minute chart come Monday is a reclaim of ideally both of these levels. I do expect they'll move a little bit more downside, making the necessary move to reclaim those slightly smaller than it currently stands come Monday. But it's it would take about a four, maybe 4.2% move to the upside to really reclaim both of those. But that is best case scenario. Bears, any upside test of that 50 period, you'd like to see a high volume rejection prior to even making it through inside of that channel being formed by those two averages. Now, let's move on here to the 4-hour chart and take a look. You can see here that Tesla pulling back has now put the 4-hour chart a little bit less immediately relevant. That 50 period was in play uh, last night. We gave that one a test. Today, we now find ourselves heading into the weekend about 4.9, almost 5% away from that 50 period on the 4-hour. So listen, bulls, 
Ideally, we don't want to see that thing curl downside too hard. Bears, that's exactly what you guys want. But listen, I don't want to overhype anything. I'm really only paying attention to the 4-hour if the stock is able to return back upside and make a test of that 50 period, which currently sits at about 173, 173.10. All right, let's move on to the daily and get the real story of what's going on. This paints the most obvious picture, and this one also has, by far, the most eyeballs, so we need to pay attention here. And by the way, just really quick before we do, you can see Tesla, of course, closed at 164.90 today. Take a look up top. This was a poll that I ran on the channel last night. Um, you know, be sure to vote. I'm going to run these every day just to get, I think, a good sample size of what people are thinking heading into the next day. And uh, you guys actually got the majority, 36% actually pulled this one off. A close below 165 was the top answer. So be sure to vote uh, in all the stocks or uh, whichever stock you know you you like the most on those daily community posts um you can check those out in the community tab on the channel but listen here on the daily you guys notice anything on thursday we made an upside test of that 177.50 ish area and we rejected hard today heading into the weekend we gave up yet again that 166.50 to 167 region remember we talked about how bears it would be in your best interest to see a close beneath the bottom end of that channel. So beneath 166.50. And you guys pulled that off here today, which means come Monday, it's a battle of that channel. Bears, even if it's a very small green day, if I'm a bear, I would actually be relatively happy with just any close beneath 166.50 to get another day's worth of confirmation out of that break. Bulls. This is a first day break. By no, in no way are the bears kind of out of the woods, so to speak. No pun intended. I like to see at least a couple of days of confirmation. This is like a first day downside break. So bulls, a hold above the top end of that channel, which is 167, would be a beautiful close on Monday. Get up through the channel of 166.50 to 167. Get above 167 on high volume. If possible, make a retest of that 167 range on lower volume. And then, boom, a high volume confirmation with a bounce off of 167. Doesn't have to be exact, right? But a bounce away on higher volume would be a beautiful break and hold. A first day hold, nonetheless, come Monday. But when you get that break on big volume, low volume retest, and then high volume confirmation to me that's much more definitive now the expected move if we take a look at the chain the next expiration is next friday april 12th and the expected move by close on friday is plus or minus nine dollars and 52 cents per share this is the volatility expectation that the market's giving us which is a huge piece of the puzzle here now again looking ahead to next week we look at each day and we don't have earnings coming up until uh, april 23rd so it's not like there's an earning event or an earnings event next week that kind of offsets one day being more expected volatility than the other. So if we divide that that end of week expectation by five trading days, we get about a dollar ninety plus or minus expectation per day. But again, we're not done. That's assuming a streak, a five day green streak or a five day red streak. So I like to add fifty percent to that, and that shows us that the market's expecting about two dollars and eighty five cents ish. Um, per share, plus or minus, and that's per day, which is not a tremendous volatility expectation, but understanding what the market expects allows you to more effectively position yourself in options since realized volatility, being correct about realized volatility versus expected volatility, helps you make money or lose less money because IV is priced into the contracts through the Greek Vega. It's not all directional bias. You can be directionally correct using options and still lose money. You have to understand volatility. But all that being said, we have one more directional bias that we can pull out of Tesla here on Friday as we head into, into Monday. This is how traders are positioning themselves today heading into next week. We had 3.8 million total contracts traded, 1.85 million calls, 1.98 million puts. So it's, listen, it's close, but a very slight put side bias on the overall. But if we look at the short term speculator category, we have 776,000 calls and 700,000 puts. So the short term speculators actually flip to a slight 
call side bias here on Tesla heading into the weekend. Listen, guys, if you want to come trade with me every single day, check out the Wrench Capital Gold server. I think you'll find it tremendously helpful. And I think you'll find value in there if you find value in these videos. Every day I'm sending out my scalp setup alerts, in play stock alerts, human verified unusual options activity, and working with my platinum one on one. You can check it out at that link in the pinned comment. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.